Uh, first off, before I jumped into it, I wanted to introduce everybody. Uh, my name is Scott Krause. I'm an account manager. I also work with um, the local partners, the regional partners, and the national partners in VARS. Um, did you guys want to? Well, we, well, so my counterpart, uh, Doug Wiener. And then the brains of the operation, my solution engineer, Pime Savar. So he's, he's, he's the smart one. So um, definitely want to introduce to them. We're also, we are giving away a bottle of, I don't know if I pronounce it correctly, Chateau Saint Saint John. Is anybody wine drinkers? Am I, did I say it right? <laughs> Chateau Saint John. But we're, 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 we're giving a... We're, we're giving, away, we're giving away a bottle of wine uh, and also a year subscription to um, Netflix. So we will email you the year subscription to Netflix. So if you can, pass the, the bowl around and drop your card in the bowl, and uh, we'll draw it after the end of our presentation. Um, so by a show of hands, we just went through a big transformation, Flex Central did. By a show of hands, how many of you are familiar with Peak 10? Okay, a decent amount. And how about, how many are you familiar with, with ViaWest? No hands. And then Flexential? Well, so Peak 10 and ViaWest are now Flexential. Same company. Uh, Peak 10, we were, were a colo and cloud provider. We had 29 data centers up and down the East Coast, but nothing west of the Mississippi. Our partners and our end users were always saying, guys, when are you going? When are you going to get a data center you know, in, in Colorado or west of the Mississippi? And we just didn't have the space. We were looking to acquire facilities, but we didn't have, this, we didn't have any facilities at the time. And Via West was the, basically the peak 10 of the west coast. They had roughly around 29 data centers, give or take. And um, our CEOs, they always talked. They always exchanged notes. We strategized. Uh, we both used Zerto for you know, business continuity, DR as a service. And, um, Last year in June, we acquired ViaWest for $1.7 billion. So overnight, we became the largest private colon cloud provider in the world. Um, today, we have 41 data centers across the United States. And we're, like I said, we're the largest hybrid provider in the world. Um, the cool thing about Peak 10, Flex Central, I've been at Flex Central, or you can call us Flex, um, for coming up on three years. And it's a culture-based business. We care about our people. And I come from the model that people buy from people. And, um, you know, we're really easy to work with. Uh, we don't have a lot of tape, a lot of red tape, a lot of bureaucracy. Um, and it's just a really cool, cool company to work for. So our tagline with Flex is the power of people in a technical world. So which button do I push to? Awesome, okay. So really what I wanted to do today is um, you know, explain a little bit of who we are, what we do, and explain a little bit on how you all can gain a better understanding for co-location and cloud services, how you can position it, and how can, how can you make more money? Um, I come from the telecom world. I worked at Comcast for a short period of time, a um, couple years, way back when. I work for Cogent at level three. I come from the telecom world. It, just so I can get a good understanding from, from the crowd, how many of you all specialize in you know, network, data services, and voice? Okay. How many of you all specialize in co-location and cloud? Okay, Barry, I know Barry. Okay, awesome. Um, and we have any hardware folks in the, in the crowd? Okay, hardware folks, okay, awesome. So. Really what we want to do is when we come back here six months from now or a year from now and we say how many of you specialize in co-location and cloud, how many of you are getting you know, checks from TCG for co-location and cloud, all of you guys raise your hand and you're like, man, the co-location and cloud industry has been great. Um, you know, so, so, so our goal is really what we want to do today is make this about you all, uh, make this about, hey, how can we make more money you know, in, this, in this line of business? So, the easiest thing to do is really, you know, when you guys are selling network or when you're selling hardware, is to ask that one or two additional questions at the, at the end of your you know, pitch or at the end of your meeting 
to uncover these opportunities because sometimes just one question can open a world of different opportunities. And I, and I get sometimes it's, it's risky because you're like, hey, I know network inside and out, but I just don't really know about this. And I feel, I'm feeling uncomfortable you know, asking these questions. But sometimes these very high level questions can open a world of different opportunities in our space. So when you guys go and you meet with a customer, I mean, do you guys go to their equipment room and like, you know, look at their look at their gear on site. Yeah. So the easiest question for that is is hey, have you ever thought about moving this gear off site into a facility, into a data center? If they're currently in a data center, are you happy uh, with your facility? You know, they might say, yeah, you know, my VP was talking about moving some stuff. I, I don't know. Hey, I got some guys over at Flex Central. They're outside of the Florida storm surge. They have 41 different facilities. Let's go over there and take a tour. And at that, that, at that point, we could take the bull by the horns and um, you know, run with the opportunity to keep you engaged from, from that standpoint. Uh, if they're in a facility, ask them if they're happy. You know, a lot, of, a lot of our competitions, sometimes they might take three, four weeks to do a simple cross-connect. And you know, cross-connect can only take a couple days. Um, you know, is, there, is, there, is there space secure? Is it safe? Um, Doug will get into some of the things that you want to look for when you're going in and you're looking at their closet or their cage or their computer room. Um, the second question, has you, have you ever considered moving workloads or applications to the cloud? I was at the CIO Council um, yesterday, and this is an initiative, this is a discussion that the C-levels and their boards are having with their VP of ITs, with their IT directors. They're asking them, you know, Mr. Mr. IT, how can we leverage the cloud? You know, should we be in that space? Tell me more about it. And a lot of them, they don't really know about it. Um, and this is where you can bring us in, and we can help coach you about cloud services. And you know, we can help coach the customer, and we can see if they're a cloud fit. Some customers are physical cola fits. Some of them are cloud fits. Um, you know, hardware. You have to refresh your hardware every three to five years. You know, ask the customer, hey, is your equipment becoming end of life? Because when your equipment becomes end of life, you know, you have to ask the customer, hey, do you want to spend another $100,000, you know, $300,000 on your equipment? Or have you ever thought about moving into an OPEX model where I'm using somebody else's equipment, somebody else's facility, um, so I can take that, that pressure off myself and not have to pay that upfront cost? That, that is the cloud. There's a lot of different buzzwords around cloud. Um, the second question is, uh, third question is, do you have a business continuity plan or a disaster recovery plan? And then what is the plan? The what is the plan is the most important part of the question because you'll ask a customer, do you have a business continuity plan? And they'll say yes, and then you'll just move on. And then you'll say, well, Mr. Customer, what is the plan? Oh, we back up some tapes and we send them over to Iron Mountain. Well, that's not business continuity. That's backup. And there's a difference between backup and business continuity. Pine will get into that when we go over the, you know, the disaster recovery cloud as a service. But business continuity is your business is always up and running. I'm, sh I'm sure a lot of you guys have Bank of America. You, know, you have your Bank of America app. Could you imagine if you went to your Bank of America app and you tried to log on, and all of a sudden you couldn't get access to your bank account? And then you called Bank of America, and they said, well, you know, we're down right now, but we backed up some tapes for your bank account and we put it in another facility. And, you know, once we get it back up and running, you know, then we'll go retrieve those tapes and uh, then we'll have all your banking information. You're going to be like, no, I need to have this information up and running all the time. So that's business continuity. So it's important to go a little bit deeper dive to ask them what is their business continuity plan. It needs to be a replication model that may be part of their environment you know, which are like the important virtual machines or all their environment is always accessible and is always up and running in a production state. So a little bit about Flex Central. Um, as I mentioned, we have 41 different data centers uh, across um, now 21 different markets. In some of our markets like Nashville, we have five different data centers. Um, in Fort Lauderdale, we have two under one roof. It's a purpose-built data center. Uh, built specifically for Category 5 storms. Ha have, ha have, has, has everybody seen the Peak 10 or Flex Central facility by show of hands? Well, I, 
I will welcome you all if you if you if you ever want to come by for a tour, we can give you a quick 30 minute tour to show you the facility. Um, and you know, we're growing. I mean, obviously we have a hundred gig backbone. We're connecting all of our facilities. I think a good thing to mention too is, you know, you're gonna hear from customers, uh, a data center is a data center. We have a lot of competition out there. We ha in South Florida, we have data centers that are in multi-tenant office buildings. I used to work at one down on 100 Biscayne Boulevard in the New World Tower. Um, we have data centers that are built out of warehouses. Um, and then we have purpose-built data centers. But a little story, we purchased, Peak 10 did, we purchased our Fort Lauderdale facility from One Vault in 2000, 2009, correct? And when we purchased this facility, they were at 99.9% .9 power utilization, meaning they were one power surge away from tripping the whole environment. You know, Peak 10, we came in, we upgraded the full environment, we never operate above 80% threshold, but you wanna work or you wanna suggest to your end users a data center that's financially stable, that's gonna invest in the infrastructure over time. Because these PDUs, these UPS systems, you need to be constantly maintaining those facilities. We pump about, what is it, $100 million every, every year into our facilities. So we're constantly maintaining the facilities, upgrading the facilities, uh, because we have certain compliances that we need to meet, and we'll go over the compliances, but you don't want to go into a data center that isn't financially stable, because they're not going to be upgrading that infrastructure, and then your customers are going to be spending all this money for space, real estate, in a facility that you know, might be running high on power utilization or on, or on old gear. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean, so, so thank, thank you, Cynthia. And you know, when you guys do come on the tour, we're getting sets of uh, VR goggles, and we even sent VR goggles um, out to our clients to where they can actually put these VR goggles on and they can take a tour uh, through our Compark Denver facility, which is like 170 square feet with like 80 foot ceilings. It's like absolutely ridiculous. But um, you know, they can tour Fort Lauderdale and Denver in the same day. So we're always looking to do cool things like that. Um, you know, you know so, so thank you. So, um, you know, the other thing to mention too, when we, show our, when we show our locations, is working with a data center that has facilities in different markets. So this is important, why? So all of you guys remember Irma? I'm guessing all of you were here for Irma. So I was watching, you know, minute by minute Hurricane Irma, and I'm watching Rick Scott, and he's going, you know, Miami Beach, evacuate, you know. Uh, this part of Miami, evacuate. Fort Lauderdale Beach, evacuate. So you ask yourself, okay, your facility, Scott Krause, is a 24 by seven facility, 365, you got armed security guards, you got people manning it. I need to buy this facility in the case of a disaster. What if a disaster comes and Rick Scott says, all of South Florida, Cat 5 is coming, everybody needs to evacuate. Who's gonna watch the facility? You know, this happened in Miami Beach. I heard that a lot of Miami Beach city employees evacuated and the city of Miami Beach fired them because the city of Miami Beach said, oh, you guys need to be at work. And they left to take care of their family. So, you know, as a TAC member, as somebody in our operations team, they're gonna come with that decision, they'll, at some facilities, they'll come to that decision of, if it's storms really coming when I really need this facility, am I gonna, am I gonna leave? and take care of my family, or am I gonna man this data center? So what we do, since we have a bunch of different locations, all of our TAC members are ITIL certified, we actually fly down our, um, our TAC team and we train them to work out of our facility. We train them to work out of other facilities. So in the event when they say, hey, Fort Lauderdale, evacuate, I can leave, my TAC members can leave, and then we bring in a trained staff from other markets to operate our facility. So the facility is truly 24 by 7, 365. And that's very important because, you know, these customers, even though, even though we say 
85% of outages are caused by human error. Only 15% of outages are actually caused by natural events. That's still, we're in South Florida, people are thinking hurricanes, what, hap what happens um, in this event? So all of our facilities, they're connected via 100 gig redundant waves. Um, you know, so in Fort Lauderdale, for example, um, you know, we blend NTT and we blend uh, CenturyLink and uh, we're directly connected to Atlanta and Charlotte. Now both Atlanta and Charlotte, they blend two, tier one, two, two different tier one ISPs. So in the event where something did happen with NTT and CenturyLink in South Florida, we could backhaul IP from Atlanta or backhaul IP from Charlotte. So the customer's always operational. Now, mind you, we're carrier neutral. So if your customer said, hey, Scott, you have a premium internet connection, but you know, it's a little bit more. You know what? I really want to pick up um, Windstream. I have a Windstream MPLS SD-WAN. I want Windstream. No problem. They call Ron. Ron sells them a connection. And then we just provide a cross connect from our cabinet to Windstream or Comcast or wh whoever else. Now, we still recommend they take one make from us. So in the case that does go down, they can burst with that circuit, but that's, we can kind of get into that, get into that later. In addition to our internet con connections, we also provide DDoS protection on all of our internet circuits. So DDoS attacks are becoming more and more prevalent. So in the case where a customer does experience a DDoS attack on our interconnect, internet connection, we'll send them a post-mortem explaining what happened with the attack, when the attack happened, and what we did to resolve the attack. So it's truly a premium, you know, internet grade connection. So we're seeing a big push right now with both colo and cloud, um, you know, with healthcare and financial. And the reason with healthcare and financial is because they have to be compliant. Um, out west, we have high trust facilities, which is like HIPAA on steroids. Um, you know, you know, we have some customers that you know, some healthcare customers that are like, hey, Scott. I have a production environment in, let's say, let's say the NAP, my competition, but I need, uh, in order to satisfy this compliance, I need to have a business continuity environment, so I'm looking at your Atlanta site. Um, you know, so all of our facilities, both our co-location and our clouds are fully compliant, SSA 16, SOC 1 through 3, you name it, we have, we have a separate compliance team um, in Charlotte where that's all they do is they specialize in compliance. In addition, you know, as I mentioned before, you know, Flex Central, we're very easy to work with. We take pride in, you know, how we treat our partners. We take pride in how we treat our customers. So a lot of people know us as Peak 10. We're still getting the word out there with Flex Central. We changed the name in January. Um, you know, it's hard pressed to, to, to ask your end users, hey, what do you think of Peak 10? And somebody saying anything bad about Peak 10. Um, we take pride in how we treat our customers, we take pride in how we treat our partners, and we have the, one of the highest MPS scores um, in the industry. So MPS scores, are, are, you, are you all, is anybody familiar with MPS scores? No, by show of hands, okay. Well basically with our customers, what we do is we send a survey, uh, and they said rate us between one to 10. And nine to 10 is really good, seven to eight is average, and one to six is poor. And they'd subtract the one to sixth from the nine and the 10 and they come up with your MPS score. Um, so something we really are pride, take pride in is, is, is our high MPS score. Um, and it was high both on the Peak 10 side and the Via West side. It was very important for us when we acquired MPS, when we acquired Via West, is to acquire a company that has our same culture, that believe in people, um, you know, because, hey, let's face it, sometimes mergers and acqui acqui acquisitions are messy. Um, in this case, they had our same culture, um, and it was a very smooth, smooth transition. All right, thank you, everybody. So, um, Payam Savar, so I'm the solutions engineer for Flexential, formerly Peak 10. Everybody can hear me okay? All right, good. Um, so, based on what it is that we do as a, as a company, uh, let me know, get in front of the slide, but at the end of the day, it's about your data and how to protect your information, your data. And that data is really uh, accessed via some type of an application. And that application, we all have the, our, our smart devices and smartphones. You click on an application, you will then uh, provide your credentials to then log into, for example, the, the Bank of America or whatever your bank institution that you use, 
you need to log in to the application to gain access to your information that resides somewhere. And that somewhere is where we house that information on the customer's behalf. Um, so we provide hybrid IT solutions for uh, 4,200 customers today um, across the national footprint that we have as a result of the acquisition with BioWest and so forth. Um, and, and the environments could be housed in, in different places. It could be a pure co-location environment where the infrastructure is owned and managed by the end customer. And we, as Flexential, will provide the cabinet and or cage, the power, the cooling, the internet connectivity, cross connects and IP addresses and so forth for the customer to then continue to manage and maintain their own environment. Um, they could also, as, as Scott mentioned, there's, that would be more of a capital expenditure model where they own their own equipment and then over time as the gear becomes end of life, they come to that crossroad where they need to make a decision, should I move my applications or workloads and move it into a more of an operational expenditure model and move it into a cloud services provider? And that's where we come into play as well. Um, and know that as a provider, we don't discriminate between co-location customers or cloud. We want to go at the speed of the customer based on the investments that they've made. We want to make sure we, we, we listen to those, uh, those needs and, and provide a solution based off of that. So if they have equipment that they have plenty of left, life left in them, we'll provide that co-location solution on their behalf. And then should they want to move their workloads to our cloud, we could even entertain those conversations. Now, from it, we, there was conversations around voice over IP. Um, I mean, there, there's some applications that cannot be virtualized. It could be a high power SQL server. It could be a number of different applications. Maybe it could be a, a, a iSeries or a Unix server, things that cannot run in a cloud environment, but it would still need to reside in a co-location environment. We are able to provide hybrid solutions where we place that equipment within a cabinet and we could then cross connect it to run or communicate with the workloads that are running in the Flexential cloud. So that would be our definition of hybrid where the customer owns the equipment and meanwhile it's cross connecting to equipment that Flexential owns yet they own and manage the applications. You do it uh, a private cloud or you do it a, a public cloud? Yes, we do both and I'll get to those down the road. Um, so. This uh, image shows we do co-location services, we do cloud services, and the multi-tenanted flavor, that, that, um, which is essentially, think of it as an apartment community. Um, it's highly secure, yet no, there's no visibility between the different units of, of, of customers. Um, that would be our multi-tenanted public cloud offering. Then we have a private cloud as a single tenant. Think of it as a single family residence. That's where the underlying infrastructure is exclusive to that specific customer. Um, so that would be the, the two different flavors of, of public and private. Then from a connectivity perspective, all of our data centers will be, as Scott mentioned, interconnected in a 100 gig wave. Um, so you will be able to have customers leverage any number of one of our data centers and say, for example, you could place equipment within our data center in Fort Lauderdale and then have it replicate or communicate to another one of our data centers and for example Atlanta. Uh, we have managed solutions along with professional services which I'll get into in a little bit here. So let me just try to click next. All right, so co-location. I think we, we touched on this. It's all about removing the headache associated with uh, all things co-location. Your, your law firm, your doctor's office, your, your Whatever it is you do as a service, but you don't do managing UPSs, uninterruptible power supplies. These are the batteries that need to be on standby. Should you use, lose power, they will run off the batteries. The generators, you're, they're not in the business to maintain and manage generators. They're not in the business to maintain and manage a purpose-built facility to withstand a Category 5 type hurricane. So, and that's what we do. So what we want to take that risk on behalf of the customer and along with the various compliances, as, uh, um, if we are a HIPAA compliant data center as well as cloud services provider, uh, a PCI compliant co-location as well as cloud and various other uh, SA16 and the SOC reports and what have you. Um, so we do 
you know, from a security perspective, we take it very seriously. Starting from the outside, we, we, we monitor the environment. We have cameras throughout critical intersections of all of our facilities. We have, uh, you'll be greeted with an armed security guard. Well, as the lone data center that we have that's armed security guard is our Fort Lauderdale. The rest, we have security guard presence 24 hours, seven days a week. Um, and we leverage multi-factor authentication to gain access to the equipment that is running in our data centers. So, as well as the compliance. And we have a compliance, a compliance officer that sits out of our headquarters in Charlotte, one of two headquarters that we have, and they uh, focus on all things compliance. They make sure that we stay current and, and up to date. And based off of the environmentals, at the local level, at every single data center, we manage, uh, we, we monitor the, the power, the internet connectivity, the cooling, all things data center to make sure that we are completely current with, with everything. So then we talked about a little bit about our public cloud. So that would be our multi-tenant apartment community type of a cloud environment, which is still very much a HIPAA and, and PCI compliant uh, cloud. Um, and it's based on a predictable model. And we could, I could dive into it in much greater detail, but just know that the applications that are running at customers' environments can run in our cloud environment based on a predictable model, meaning that the, on a monthly recurring basis, it's the same bill month after month after month. Whereas the hyperscalers is based on a metered model where it's, it's utility-based, as the lights turn on and the, the data is being accessed, the, the incremental charges are being incurred, right? And then so you, Do you have in the public cloud uh, uh, tools for reporting on the outage side, meaning for PCI and HIPAA compliance? Reporting on the outage, okay, a, a reporting tool that would report outage at which well, site? Report for outage, right? Okay. Audits. Oh, yes, 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 audits, okay. For PCI and HIPAA compliance? Yes, so, um, so as we go through our compliances, those documents are accessible via our portal, which you're able to access uh, a few clicks away, you're able to access the, uh, the documentation. Is that in line with what you were asking as far as? Uh, yes and no. Okay, so n n tell me, help me understand a little it's, bit better. It's, uh, because of the type of client that you're dealing with, right. they have to run for their specific as a tenant, sure. their specific site sure. of where they're accessing their information and applications, they have to have, uh, they have to run specific reports to get those results to pass it over to the audience. Yes, yes, so we do offer security services uh, where we could run reports, uh, and those services could include web application firewalls, intrusion detection, preventative services, log and threat management, penetration testing, all those different things are we, we were able to run and we'll be able to do a report against those to be able to give you that data. So you could then hand it over to whomever that wants to know, right? Uh, thank you for that. Um, and then recovery cloud, this was a really good one. So if you think about co-location, similar to your house, if you, or economy, wherever you, you live, if you end up physically moving residences, that's a disruptive event in your life and think of it also disruptive for the, the customer that has to move their IT infrastructure from one location to a data center. Um, but it's still very much a necessary event that needs to take place, especially if the environment could be compromised. It could be a, um, a kitchen that's right above the second floor. It could be, there's a number of different things that could make a place um, vulnerable to where you'd want to make that move to a, a data center provider. Um, however, from a disaster recovery perspective, when you're replicating from one location to the next, you don't have to move anywhere. It's a matter of us coming in, doing the installation, and then sending the data over the wire, and that wire is, from a telecommunication standpoint, is where you all would come in to provide that circuit, right? Because at the end of the day, yes, go ahead. I don't hear you very well. Oh. Could you speak up a little bit? Definitely. So we're talking about disaster recovery. And we're talking about sending, either you physically move from one data center to another, that's a disruptive, disruptive event as you go, from, go through a physical move from A to B. 
Now, when you have a disaster recovery solution, you could stay where you are and just send the data over the wire. You don't have to physically move anything other than data. And that data and that wire could be the telecommunications um, circuit that you established with Windstream, for example, where they would establish the MPLS network or maybe an SD-WAN environment, and the data would be sent over that wire from the customer's premises over to our cloud environment. So professional and managed services. So our core competency is, is around co-location services and, and cloud services, and then we started getting into more of a managed services where we would move further up the stack related to uh, the customer's environment. So uh, whether the customer owns their own equipment and they've got virtual servers that, or even physical servers in their own co-location environment, or if they are running those applications in our cloud environment, we are able to provide the managed services to support that operating system. So for example, uh, we would install antivirus. We'll provide monitoring and patching of the operating system. We'll provide backups of that environment. And beyond that, we're able to provide security services, encryption as a service. So if you think about it from, a, from an outside in perspective, when you have firewalls, you're protecting the perimeter, the outer, think of it as a moat around a castle. Um, and so we're protecting that environment. Uh, so from an intrusion detection perspective and, and monitoring the data that's coming and going from, from the outside. Once in, how are you protecting the data at rest? So there are customers that provide their own encryption, uh, but we also have a as a service model related to encryption where we, we provide that as a service. Um, Object-based storage, so that is similar to Amazon Web Services S3 service, where we'll provide the disk, the, the hard drive, if you will, within our cloud environment, and the customer could then send data from their premises, whether it's inside of our data center or their own data center at 123 Main Street, and send data to our object-based storage environment. Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good the option to have on behalf of customers because there's a lot of people that are spending good money after bad and continuously buying additional shelves of disk to add to their SAN. In this environment, uh, they, they could stop purchasing the, the disk. Instead, take a look at the data that hasn't changed as much and take that data and then send it over to our cloud. Uh, it'll, and as a result, it'll free up the space on the local level. So that would be our object-based storage environment. Um, I mentioned our professional services. So we're able to come in and provide a variety of different capabilities from risk assessments and vulnerability assessments, um, penetration testing, and there's a, a, a dim sum menu of various options available at your disposal. So know that you would not have to speak to any of the, the items that I'm mentioning. It's a matter of having those one or two different questions up front to identify whether or not they're in a compromised location uh, to be exposed to uh, clinical disasters. It could be a person made, you know, or it could be uh, in, in a non-purpose built data center where uh, that location could uh, be deemed not accessible in the event of a disaster. So we could then have those conversations, as, as Scott mentioned, take the bull by the horn and continue having those conversations and, and solutioning to the problem, right? And, and, and it really worked towards right-sizing a tailor-fit solution that meets their needs. Um, I think we, also the migration capability. So if, if the customer has their own ability to make a, the migration take place, they could do so, or they could lean on us to leverage our migration capabilities, whether it would happen over the wire or uh, a more of a forklift uh, move and go through the whole the, the professional services engagement to make that happen. So thanks everybody for coming. Um, basically, we just wanted to you know, help you better understand how to identify an opportunity as it relates to Colo, uh, you know, cloud, because uh, there's a lot of things that your customers, your clients, that uh, when you're speaking to them, they're not considering, especially, you know, you're going into their telecom room or where they actually house all of their uh, information, their infrastructure, phone systems, connectivity, et cetera. When you go into these rooms, you know, you can basically say, you know, guys, how is, how is the power delivered? Um, I was talking to a customer the other day. He was looking to move his data center into a facility up in all places, Syracuse, New York. And uh, 
had great um, you know, referrals, all this other stuff. The one thing that this organization or this company neglected to tell him, they actually took a portion of the building in Syracuse, New York, and actually uh, leased it out to renters and condos and all these others. So his data center, he was about to sign the contract, would have resided on the sixth floor, as a, and, and all these other tenants were gonna be moving in because they repurposed the building. So there's a lot of things um, you know, that you should consider when you're talking about this. Um, you know, how, you know, what's the, the purpose of that building? You know, we're, we're purpose built back in 94 post Andrew. So a lot of considerations and it's just good dialogue. You know, ultimately you have a different conversation with them. It's gonna allow you to have a new net new revenue stream on top of what you're already, you know, achieving from, from this particular client. So, you know, how is the electricity coming through? You know, think of it because electricity comes through in waves. You know, what we do is we have the systems in place to filter and clean and, you know, take that electricity where it's coming at a steady stream. So if, and that they're not tied all together. So, you know, are the lights tied to the air conditioning? A lot of cases they are. So when something goes down, everything is out. You know, in our colo facilities, everything is broken out. So, you know, we have, we try for and strive for 100% uptime, didn't lose any power, didn't lose anything over the course of Irma, uh, you know, and all the other, the, the past hurricanes. So, you know, the customers come to us from a, a, for a reliability perspective. Um, you know, how is the building cooled? That's also, you know, a very important thing. We have our own chillers, you know, we've got all these, um, you know, next generation type solutions to ensure that a customer's infrastructure is up and being delivered and they don't have to think about that because that's not what the business that they're in, right? They don't wanna to have to worry about the data center, the cooling, the power, connectivity. That's where we come in, that's where you come in, that's our value add. Let them do what they do best, which is you know finding the next IT solution and keeping their uh, you know, their population and their, at, on their campus up and running. So, you know, those are the, some, some of the things that we consider. You know, we're uh, vendor neutral as it comes to all the carriers, so they have flexibility. You know, we don't uh, push them in one direction or another. We, along with Pyam and Scott, you know, we take a look at what they're trying to accomplish and recommend the best solution for them. And we do work with a variety of partners, uh, so we give them that, that flexibility. You're probably thinking, what does cardboard mean? Well, cardboard in a data center is not a, a very uh, a smart thing to have. Cardboard, if you don't know, will disintegrate. Those tiny, tiny little particles can fly up into the air, make its way into the, the infrastructure, servers, uh, storage, et cetera, and ultimately the life of that uh, hardware will you know, decrease or can have some type of, uh, you know, you'll hear a pop. We've got folks that are walking around 24 by seven that are in our TAC, our technical uh, you know, assistance center. We've got people all the time you know, viewing their gear and you know, say something does happen, a drive goes out or power goes out and they don't have someone on site, we've got someone always there that can go in and plug something in, swap out a drive, do something. You know, we've got those hands available to them. So it's, it's great to have that there or we, we become an extension of their IT team. Um, you know, we've got raised flooring, two to three feet, depending on the, the data center. You know, if in the event uh, there's flooding of any sort, you know, we're actually not in a flood zone. We've got a moat around us, so the, the, the chances of that happening. But we've just got all these added layers of uh, security, uh, preventative from flooding, you name it, you know, it's there. It's a purpose-built data center for, for your customers. So these are a lot of the questions that you can ask and just, again, get that dialogue. And then from there, it's just a matter of bringing us in you know, let us do the next part, that, that heavy lifting. You know, that's what we're there for. That's what the partnership's all about. And, uh, you know, you bring us in, set up a tour, and we're actually having a promo now where if you have a customer who's in an existing uh, data center or they're looking to move, if you bring them in just by setting up a data center tour, we will give you, a, you know, a, an Amazon gift card uh, just by bringing them in. It takes anywhere from a half hour to hour. We're over on commercial between uh, 441 and 95, so we're very centrally located. And, um, you know, basically talk about disaster recovery. You know, what are their plans during a hurricane? We've got great solutions that Pyme and Scott already talked about. So we'd love to go into that with you guys a little deeper. And then talk about, uh, you know, cloud. The one thing that was funny, we worked with AutoNation not too long ago. They went to the cloud, realized that, wow, that got really expensive really quick because they didn't realize it. It's kind of like using your credit card when you're on a vacation, you know, when you're not using cash. That bill gets up there pretty quickly when you're using your credit card. Cloud, in my opinion, is no different. They go in with a, you know, a, a, a perception of what that cost is gonna be, and a few months out, that price goes up and up and up because it's very easy to provision, you know, uh, you know, the workloads that you want to spin up. So, very easy to do. And with the prices of hardware and storage that have come down significantly, the footprint of that hardware has come down so much that customers are now rethinking cloud. Cloud is obviously gonna grow, it's not going anywhere. People think the contrary, that 
Colo is actually going to go down, but they're actually predicting it to be a larger market, uh, an increase of about 20 to 25 percent over the next five years. So coal is not going anywhere. Cloud's going up, but because of hardware coming down significantly, customers still want to be able to touch and feel and buy their stuff, be able to come to the data center and do that. So it's not all about cloud. There's going to be a you know shift where we'll see it in parallel or cloud and Colo will be working in conjunction. So we've got all of those offerings to offer and assist your customers. So involve us, we'll be here around after the, uh, the presentation, obviously. So uh, thanks for your time, enjoy your lunch. Question, Andy. No, another question, statement. Uh, thank you for speaking the most clearest, richest on the level that we operate on. You're not an engineer, you make more sense than anybody else. Thank you. For the shortest amount of time. Hey, that's, thank you. <laughs> All right, enjoy lunch and uh, look forward to talking to everyone afterwards. Thanks, everybody.